All right, so today we're going to cover the notes on electronic configurations and orbital diagrams. So we've been talking um, for the past week or so about kind of like how energy works, how electrons work, and that kind of stuff, trying to describe that and talking and really talking about trying to figure out where electrons are in the atoms and how they work. That's really kind of all what all that background is about, all right? So these notes are the next extension of that, which is um, sort of actually creating rules and a structure that we can use to describe where electrons are. Okay. Um, so we've got some, we got a definition, we got a definition of valence electrons, which hopefully you guys already know. Uh, valence electrons are the outermost electrons. Uh, outermost energy level, the electrons in the outermost energy level of an atom. So there are some rules that help us place the um, that help us place electrons in this structure. Okay. All right. So there are three things. There's the Aufbau principle, which says that electrons are added one at a time to the lowest energy orbitals available until all the electrons of the atom have been accounted for. So when electrons are added, they go into the place that takes the least amount of energy for them to go there, which makes sense because if it required more energy, it would take longer for them to get, you know, if they can... You know, if they go to the second level versus the fourth level, they're not going to they're not going to wait to add the electron until they go to the they have enough energy to go to the fourth level. If there's nothing in the second level, they'll fill up the lowest energy ones first. Okay, an, an atom will fill up its lowest energy levels with as electrons come in. Uh, something called the Pauli exclusion principle, which says an orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. And those electrons will have what are called opposite spins. Okay, so the orbitals, remember are the areas in which you're likely to find an electron. So you can have two electrons per orbital. So when we look back at the notes from yesterday, that's why, like here, the orbitals, each orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. So if you got one orbital, you can have a maximum of two electrons. If you got three, two each, you can hold six. Five, two each, ten, like that. Okay. Um, the opposite spin thing, you don't really you just need to know that they have opposite spins. It's it's the terminology that they use to describe a certain property of electrons. That's the best way to put it. Um, and then the third one is this thing called Hund's rule. Electrons occupy equal energy orbitals so that a maximum number of unpaired electrons results. Okay, now that's not going to make a whole bunch of sense until we start doing this, but I'll go back to it and kind of show you guys. All right. So the first thing, um, the first thing we're going to do is create a chart showing the order that electrons fill the sublevels because it doesn't go in order the entire way. Like it'd be really nice if it went 1s was first, then 2s, then 2p, then 3s, 3p. Like that'd be really great. Unfortunately, it doesn't go like that. All right, so we create a little chart that we can use to know the order that they fill. Here's how we do it. We write out the sublevels for each primary energy level. Start in the upper left corner with 1s for the first energy level. The next line is the sublevels for the second energy level, 2s, 2p. Third energy level has sublevels 3s, 3p, and 3d. The fourth and every energy level after it has all four. So I've already done that for you. I've already done step one. Okay. Then draw diagonal arrows through the sublevels from upper right to lower left. So we start with this one with 1s. Okay, now, 
when you draw the arrow, make sure you can, like, don't make it so dark you can't see the number under it. We see, you still need to see the sublevel. Okay? So it goes like this. Okay, so when you're done, it should look like that. It doesn't matter. I went all the way down. It doesn't matter. It, um, the only the reason I didn't is because um, we don't have enough electrons to get that far. So oh, okay. it, we, you run out of it. Like, the biggest element doesn't reach that part, so you're okay. Okay. Now, another thing that I want to point out with this, just so everybody kind of understands, is that if you, if you look um, horizontally like this in the, in the row, those are the elect those are the energy levels so like this is energy level one the 2s and the 2p would be an energy level two 3s 3p 3d would be third fourth fifth so on and so forth okay does that make sense all right Okay, so what, what you just did is you created the, the tool, basically, that's going to help us know that the, the order that the electrons fill the sublevels. So um, think of it basically like, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the, like the champagne waterfall thingy, like wedding thing is like, you know, you got glasses. Oh, it's red. And then like this type of deal. Right. And then like you pour you pour into the top one and when that one fills all up, then it like overflows and fills the next ones and so on and so forth like that. Okay, that's kind of that's kind of how the um, electrons, like when, when electrons go into atoms, that's sort of the kind of the idea, is they'll go in and they'll fill up the lowest ones first, and when, uh, when those get filled, the, the lowest energy ones first, then they'll go on to the next one. Except it's all about, it's not necessarily what we call like the level, it's the amount of energy. They'll always go into the easiest, the one that requires the least amount of energy. So sometimes... That's why it doesn't go in order because remember electrons repel, right? Because they're all negative, so they repel each other. So sometimes in the bigger ones, when you get a lot of electrons in a level, it's easier for an electron to go in a in a in a totally open level than it is to start doubling up. Okay, and I'll show you. I'll, we'll kind of show you how that works, or to start going in there. Okay, so. Um, I know you guys. I know your guys are back, back to front. Um, I couldn't. I couldn't fit it all on the front, unfortunately. So, this is um, this is how it works. I'm going to walk you through, like this, the example one that's on the top of the back. Um, so I would just stay on this page, and then you can just look at it up here. Uh, okay, so. We're going to use these rules and this chart. Oh, that's not in there. We're going to use the rules up there and the chart to help write what's called an electron configuration. It's, it's essentially a 
it's like a map of where the electrons are in an atom. Okay, so figure out how many electrons the atom has. It's the same as the protons unless it is an ion, if it had, unless it has a charge. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. So this one, the 80 over 35 BR is 35 electrons because it doesn't have a charge. Okay, so start with the arrow from through 1s. And you follow the arrows from like rear to point, however you want to say it, from the back to the, the, the head of the arrow. Okay. You write the sublevel and put the maximum number of electrons in the sublevel by writing it as a superscript. So the first sublevel you had is 1s. So you write down 1s. Okay, and then this is where this this is where this comes into play. S is have one orbital, two electrons. So the maximum electrons for an S is two. So you do one S two. Okay. Then subtract the number of electrons in the sublevel from the total. So we started out with 30, uh, 35. After doing this, we now have 33. We've got 35 electrons to put into these spots. So every time we put electrons in, we're subtracting them until we run out. Okay. So follow the arrow to the next sublevel. If you come to the end of the arrow, the head, however you want to say it, go to the tail of the next arrow to find the next sublevel to fill. So the first one is really easy. That's just 1s, right? You hit the head, you go to the tail of the next one. The next one we hit is 2s. So you write down 2s and you put the maximum number of electrons as a superscript. So there, subtract that number. So we're down to 31. Okay, then you go back to this. Head of the arrow to the tail, we hit 2p. So we write down 2p. All p's have three orbitals, maximum of six electrons. So you write 2p, 6. You subtract 6. We're down to 25. Okay, next. After 2p, we follow the arrow, we hit 3s. So you write 3s. All s's can hold 2. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what number is like in front of the, like the p or whatever. In terms of like how many electrons and stuff? Yeah. No. The, the, remember, the number in front is only the energy. It only tells us what energy level it is. Okay. So P, all P's can hold six. So 2P6, 25. 3S is the next one we get. Take away two. We're down to 23. Okay. After we hit 3S, we go to tail of next one. So we hit 3P. So we write down 3P. All P's can hold six. So we put six, so we're down to 17. After 3P, now see here's where the order starts changing. So we're following the arrow, right? After 3P, we actually hit 4S. Before we do 3D, we, we follow the arrow, we hit 4S. So we write down, after 3P, we write 4S. All S's can hold two, so we put a two. We're down to 15. After 4s, head of the arrow, tail of the next, we hit, now we hit 3d. All d's can hold a maximum of 10. So we put 3d 10. Okay, now we're down to 5. Okay. We continue this until we run out of electrons. So after 3d, we hit 4p. 4p can hold how many? 6, but how many do we have left? Five. So you, you put the number you have. You don't put six because you don't have six. We only have five. So we put 4P, five, and now we run out to zero. Okay. This is the electron configuration. That's the answer. This whole thing right here is the answer. All right. So you're just showing us like how to work through it. Mm -hmm. Yep.
Okay, questions? All right, next thing. So those are electron configurations. It's where the electrons uh, are in the atom in, in what sublevels. Now, there's something called an orbital diagram, this next thing. The or orbital diagram shows the distribution of electrons among the orbitals in each energy level and sublevel in an atom. You use the same three rules, but we're getting a little more detailed with this. Start with the arrow through 1s. You write the sublevel, 1s, and you put blank lines over it representing the number of orbitals within that sublevel. In other words, all s's have 1, all p's have 3, all d's have 5, all f's have 7. Because this, the number of orbitals per shape. Okay, so these are uh, these are numbered with the steps here. Like these are the steps um, to do this, like following along. So you write one S, then you put a blank line over it. S's only have one, so you put one blank line over it. Then put the electrons. They are drawn as either arrows or half arrows onto the orbital blanks based on the three principle principles. So one electron per orbital or line until all orbitals for a sublevel or sublevel have one electron in them. So like in five or in a, I'm sorry, on one S you put one electron. Okay. It's now there's only one sublevel. So then you go back and you double up. You put one electron until all, then you go back, fill the orbitals with a second electron with an opposite spin. Up arrow, down arrow. The order doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you go up first and then down second. It doesn't matter. You have to have one up, one down per line. Okay, this is a, you know, it's hard to see on here. These are down arrows. Okay. So then you would go, you just keep following this. Okay, so um, let me show you kind of like how, how I would do this out next to it here. So I would do, I've got 30, I've got 35 electrons, right? So I do the, um, well, so I would do 1s. I've got 2 in 1s. So one up, one down. Okay, so that now I'm down to 33 electrons. After 1s, I'm following my arrows. After 1s, I hit 2s. So I write down 2s. Okay, all s's have all s's have one orbital. So one line. Okay. Make sure that between the sublevels you leave enough room. I don't want to see something like this. Like I don't want everything jammed together. Okay, I want to be able to tell the difference between sublevels. I want to be able to tell what orbital goes to what sublevel. So 2s. I would put one electron in, second electron, opposite spins. Okay. After 2s, we hit, on our chart, uh, on this, we hit 2p. All p's have three orbitals. So one, two, three lines. Put the sublevel under the center one. They're always odd, so there'll always be a center one. 2p. Now, here's where you can actually see um, here, this is the part where you can actually see this rule. Uh, electrons occupy equal energy orbitals so that a maximum number of unpaired electrons results. When there are two electrons on a, on a, in an orbital, a line, that's paired. They're paired up, opposite spins. So this would be, this would be paired. Unpaired is when you just have one electron on a line. That doesn't have a pair. So when I'm putting these in, technically this is how I would do it. I would go one, 
one, one. And then if I still have electrons left, I go back and I start pairing them. Okay. Now, I, I knew I had more than six left. So you don't have to, like, when you're doing it, you don't have to go, like, one, 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 and then go back and do Like, if you know you're going to have enough electrons to fill the whole thing, you can just go, like, up, down, up, down, up, down, like that or whatever. Okay. So six. So now I'm down to 25. After 2P, I hit 3S. So 3S, again, S is just one. So up, down, down to 23. After 3S, we have 3P, right? So 3P, how many lines? There you go. Uh, I know I have six electrons at least. Oh, sorry. I know I have six electrons at least, so I'm just going to fill this all up. Okay. And that's six, so I'm down to 17. After 3P, now I'm just going to, I'm going to use this. You guys get the idea. Like I'm going, you go back to the chart, you follow along, right? Okay. So I'm going to use this so I don't have to keep going back. Um, so after 3P, we hit 4S. 4S can hold two. Okay. After 4S, we hit uh, 3D. I'm going to do it underneath here so I don't. So Ds have five orbitals, so you need five lines. 3D in the middle. And I, oh, I wasn't subtracting, so I was down to 15. I know, I know I've got 10 electrons, so I'm going to go. 10 electrons. Like that, I'm down to five. After 3D, I hit 4P. Now, you need to put the number of orbitals even if there aren't electrons on them. Okay, so 4P, so P is, bless you, three. So 4P. Now, I, I know I'm gonna run out here because I, I, I can fit six, but I've only got five. So here, so when you get to that point where you run out, that's where you need to do the one at a time thing. So I go one, two, three. And after I get one in each on each orbital, I go back and I double up. So one, two, three, four, five. Like that. And then the last one is that. Then the last thing you do um, is uh, a lot of times I'll ask you, like, how many unpaired electrons are there? So unpaired electrons are any um, any line, any orbital that has one electron in it. So this would be one unpaired electron. Okay. If it's just a line, like say we had, say when we hit 4P, we only had two electrons left. So we did this and we did 4P. And we only had two electrons, so it's one, one, and then we ran out. Okay. How many unpaired would that be? Two. two. Okay. A, an orbital. I want you to draw the orbital. I want you to draw the right number of orbitals, but if it's blank, that's not an unpaired. So this would be two unpaired. Make sense? Okay. So that's, that's essentially it um, for the notes. Uh, I'm gonna. I want to walk you through um, at least one of the homework, just so we can get used to kind of doing them because these were already done for us. So, uh, but I figured instead of doing a bunch of examples that took forever, we might as well just get some of the homework done while we're doing it. Okay. So go ahead and grab the homework and have your stuff out so you can like have your chart out, have this out so you can use it. Okay. All right, so let's um, let's look at the first one. And you'll need a periodic table if you don't know. I mean, we can, you can look up here for right now, but if you're doing some of these later, you'll need a periodic table because you've got to figure out how many electrons they have. So you're, what you're going to do is to save you guys time, um, I have you guys do this thing, what I call a combined 
combined electron configuration orbital diagram. And that's basically where you're where we're putting the two together. Okay, and I'll show you I'll show you what I mean by that. So uh, number one with K, potassium, how many electrons does potassium have? Nineteen, good. So it's the atomic number. It's the same as the atomic number as long as there's no charge. Okay, now, before, uh, just to make sure, flip it over to number 10. And three negative. Anybody remember what the three negative means happened? Good, gain three electrons. So nitrogen normally would have seven. So N three negative means it has 10. So... This one's going to start with 10 electrons, okay? After, after you figure that out, ions, the ones with charges, you do them exactly the same way as, as all the others. There is no difference. The only difference is it changes how many starting electrons you start with, okay? All right, so let's go back to potassium. We said it has 19, right? Yeah. Okay, so... We're starting on our on our graph, and you're going to get used to the this as you go, kind of like so. One S, right? So put it down a little bit. So the reason I gave you so much room is that way you can do like two lines or something if you need to, kind of like I was doing here. Okay. Um. So uh, I'm going to start with one S. Okay. Now I'm putting it down a little bit because. I'm also doing, I'm doing both the electron configuration and the orbital diagram. So 1s has how many lines? The orbitals. Just one. Yep. One, one line and then two electrons, right? So it's two electrons. So we're going to do 1s, two. So that's the electron configuration part. It looks like squared, but it's a superscript. 1s, two. And then line and two electrons. So we're combining both together, the, the electron configuration and the orbital diagram. So after 1s, we hit 2s, correct? So it's going to be 2s can hold, and s is going to hold uh, 2, so squared, not squared, 2s2. Uh, one line, two electrons, one up, one down. So far so good, making sense? What do we hit after 2s? 2p. How many uh, electrons can how many electrons can uh, p's hold? Six. Six. So we're going to do, uh, and how many lines? Three. Three lines. So one, two, three lines. 2p. Oh, sorry. We should be keeping track. Uh, 2p6. We should be keeping track. So we've used so far uh, ten, right? So we're down to nine after 2p6. Uh, okay, so three lines, two electrons, one up, one down on each line. After 2p, what do we hit? 3s. 3s, so how many lines? One. So 3s can hold two electrons, one line. So that brings us down to seven. After 3s, what do we hit? 3p, how many lines? Kind of close. Three P can hold six, which we have six left because we were down to seven, right? So we go down, one up, one down, down, down to one. After three P, we hit four S. So one line. Four S can hold two, but we've only got one left, correct? So 4s1. So we just have one electron. And then we need to say how many unpaired we have. Two unpaired electrons. One unpaired. Okay. And that is the answer. That's the whole thing. Okay. So we're putting them together like that. Um if you if you write really big or stuff like that or you were you know you don't think you can do it on another sheet of paper too if you want um you can also like i said you can go on to another line if you need to 
like you can do one and then start another line or whatever. Just make sure it's clear and, and that uh, they can be counted and you know how many things you have in which parts, okay?